Hi, I'm Vicky from Rockstars and Royalty. In this series, I'm going to show you how I turn this sketch into a gown, how I make the accessories to go with it, and how I style the whole look. In part one, I showed you how I made the corset. In this video, I'm going to show you how I make, attach, and hem the skirt. So I've put my corset on the mannequin with the petticoat. I've measured over the petticoat and worked out the length that I want my skirt to be. So at the front, I need to cut it to 112 centimeters or 44 inches. My front piece will be cut on the fold and look like this. My side fronts will look like this, will also be 44 inches, 112 centimeters each side. And then once I start to get to the side back, I'll cut the side seam 44 inches, 112, but I want my back to be 60 inches or 152 centimeters. So I'm gonna cut it longer at the side back and then the full length that I want at the back and they'll look roughly like this. My front and side front pieces will be about 22 inches or 56 centimeters wide at the bottom. My side back and back pieces will actually end up wider so if it's 22 inches here once I extend those lines they'll actually end up wider at the bottom which will give us that nice full train that I want on this dress. The skirt part's going to be made up of four layers. We've got the the lining, the satin, the sequins, and then the flowery tulle, which is the top layer. So instead of making a pattern, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out the satin layer and then use that as the pattern to cut all the other layers. As I cut it, I'm gonna use the bottom of my corset pattern to make sure the width of these is all the same as the corset pieces so that all the seams line up. To cut the front and side front, I'll be folding the fabric in half lengthways. So my selvages are here and I'll be cutting, so I'll be doing front and then side front. To cut my back and side back pieces, I fold my fabric the other way. So I fold it, so if that's my selvages, I have a fold here. So that's the length of my fabric that way and I fold it that way then I can cut these because they're going to be wider at the bottom than the fabric folded in half. So then I can cut my back piece and my side back piece there. So that's folded across the width of the fabric. This one's folded the length of the fabric. Before I cut out the floral tulle layer, I'm going to cut off the scalloped edges from either side of it. And those will be stitched back on to the hem once the skirt's finished. Okay, I'm ready to start cutting out my skirt. I do this on the floor just because I've got a lot more room down here. So I've got my little guide that I just drew so I know what measurements I'm cutting this to. I've got my scissors, I've got my little disappearing pen, I've got my tape measure, and I've got my corset pattern so I can make sure the tops of the skirt panels match up with the bottom of the corset panels. I'm just using my front piece to make sure my front side front seam lines up so I can use that to mark it okay so here are my front and side front pieces so you can see they're the same length all the way round. So half of my front is measuring at about, oh, reach, 45 inches all up, which is 114 centimeters. So that's half of my front. So you can see it's gonna be really full at the bottom. So next I'm gonna fold my fabric the other way and cut the back and the side back because it's not wide enough folded selvage to selvage like this. So I know my center back seam is 60 inches, so I'm gonna measure 60 inches down and then the fold the fabric 
si right sides together on itself and measure and mark the back and side back pieces. finished skirt pieces all cut out. Unfortunately my memory card ran out before I cut the side back piece. What I did is I laid my side front piece and my back piece either side of it like I have here to mark the length and then I used my scissors to cut along the train and cut out the shape that I wanted from the side seam which is here all the way around to the centre back seam which is there. By cutting both pieces together it gives me a really nice flow and I can see the shape that the train's going to be. So we've got front, side front which are the same length so that's going to be the front of the skirt which is one length and then from the side front to the back the pieces get wider and longer as they flow into that nice train. I hope that makes sense. If you've got any questions just leave me a comment and I will do my best to answer you. Next I'm going to use these pieces as my pattern pieces to cut my lining and my sequin layers they're going to be exactly the same size and shape so i'm going to cut sew and press each layer next i'm going to cut the scalloped edges off both edges of the tool ready to sew back onto the hem later All four layers of the skirt are now joined. I've left the centre back seam open on all of them and I've pressed all the seams open. So I've got lining, satin, sequins and then the floral tool to go over the top. With right sides facing up, I'm going to join the three top layers of the skirt, the satin, the sequins and the tool together. So I'm going to pin them together and then I'll stitch all three layers together along this waist seam. The sequins do tend to stretch because they do have a horizontal stretch so I'm just going to ease them into position and put a couple of little gathers if I need to to get them to fit. Next with right sides together I'm going to join the lining of the skirt onto the bottom of the corset. I'm going to pin it along the bottom making sure all the seams line up and then I'm going to stitch my seam allowance one and a half centimetres from the edge all the way along through all of the layers. For the back where the corset back is finished but the back of the skirt isn't I'm just going to fold that back so that they meet. I've cut an extra big seam allowance on here just to make it easier to work with. Um, I almost never trim my selvages off the centre back because I hate the way that the fabric frays. Only if it's really chunky I'll probably cut the satin one down before I sew it all together. Okay so this is the skirt lining stitched right sides together with the right side of the lining of the corset through all the layers and when you open it it looks like this on the bottom. You can see how I've, I'm just below my bones here where we allowed that extra couple of millimetres between the seam allowance and where the bones finished. So even though I knew I shouldn't be hitting any of the bones, I'd still sewed really slowly. So now I'm going to leave this folded up that way. Turn the whole thing so the right side of the corset is facing up. And I'm going to do exactly the same with the outside layers of the skirt. I'm going to treat all three layers as one and put them right sides together with this side and then stitch through all of the layers again, including the skirt, making sure the skirt stays that way as I sew. 
Now depending on what fabrics you've used, this part can get pretty chunky, so you'll need a sturdy machine to get through all of the layers. And I'm going to do exactly the same at the back again and turn all three layers back like that where the finished seam of the corset is. So this is my skirt outside, my skirt lining both sewn onto the bottom of the corset. Um, you can see here I haven't managed to get the same seam allowance on both because I was going through so many layers and it's hard to tell. Um, so what I do just at the minute one of these lines of stitching is going to show on either the lining or the outside depending on which one you did first uh, and which one's higher so I'm going to go back and now sew through all the layers along the highest line of stitching and that way no stitching will be visible on the outside next I'm going to put an invisible zip in the back seam of the skirt Again, I'm going to treat all three layers of the outside of the skirt as one layer because, of course, it's quite bulky up there. I don't want the zip up there too, so I'll stop it about an inch below this seam. The zip I had here was too long and I didn't have time to go and buy one, so I'm just going to cut the bottom off once I've got it sewn into where I want it. Okay, my concealed zip is in. I haven't pressed it, so it's a bit hard to get past all the sequins at the minute. And I've shortened the end of the zip as well. I finished it about 10 inches below the seam at the bottom of the corset just so it opens really wide to make it easy to get on. So next I need to join the three layers of my skirt but I don't want them to all be joined together from the bottom of the zip down. So to do that I'm going to bring each layer up one at a time starting with the outside layer and join them from as close to the zip as I can down to the bottom. So I'll do the tool then I'll bring the sequins up and do the same and then lastly the satin and then I'll press them all open and then I'll show you how to finish that area just at the bottom of the zip. So all of my back seams are now sewn together individually and we just need to finish this little bit at the bottom of the zip which will join all the layers and then where we stop stitching they'll all come separate so they'll hang separately at the back of the skirt. With the back of the lining I've only sewn about halfway up the gap because we're going to turn the skirt through that gap to do the hem. Next, I'm just going to use a zipper foot to stitch this little gap here, but where I stop stitching, the top two layers, the sequins and the tulle, will be released as separate layers from there downwards. Now that's stitched, you can see all of the layers are neatly in the zip, and then from there downwards, they are three separate layers. Next, I'm going to put it on the mannequin and pin the hem. So I've put the dress back on my dress form and I've just lifted the tulle layer up out of the way. And now I'm going around the bottom and I'm pinning all three layers, so the lining, the satin and the sequins together. And then I'm going to measure down from the waist, make sure they're the length that I want and trim all three layers to exactly the same length at the hem and around the train. Now it's all trimmed, I've taken out all the pins except the ones holding the seams together and one at the centre front. Okay, so next it's back on my desk and I'm going to find the opening that I left in the centre back seam. And then starting at the back, I'm going to put my hand in that opening, put my hand down the centre back seam between the satin and the lining. I'm going to grab where I've got all three layers pinned together at the hem and hold that and bring it up through that gap then carefully sort of holding it together I'm going to take that pin out and then flip the lining making sure the seams line up I'm going to flip it so that the satin and sequins are on this side and then the lining is right sides together with them on this side. Find the pin at the next seam, do the same, so pin out, hold these two together and then put the lining with the right sides together against the sequins. And now I can go back along that panel and pin all three of these layers evenly together. Easy with two layers, but it is possible with three layers. 
Now that section's pinned, I'm going to do exactly the same. So find the next pin, pull it through, flip it and pin it. I'm going to do the same the whole way around the hem and then I'm going to stitch my one and a half centimetre seam allowance all the way around. I've now sewn all the way around my hem. If you find you can't get the whole hem through the gap at one time, you can do it in sections or if you're worried about the pins snagging the fabric as you pull it through. I actually did this in two sections. I did four panels and then three panels and it made it a lot easier than trying to do the whole hem in one go. So next I'm going to pull it back through the right way, which can be a bit confusing <laughs> when you've got so much fabric going on. There you go, and you can see this is my hem. I've got all three layers of fabric neatly joined together. So I'm going to pin all the way around the hem on the inside and then press it all the way around. The last job to do on this part of the skirt is to pull the lining back through join the back seam and then hand stitch it down to the inside of my zip to finish this part of the dress really neatly. I'm just going to trim these parts of the skirt and the corset before I sew it so I can hand stitch this part really neatly together so it will look kind of like that once it's done. I've now sewn the scalloped edge that we cut off from the floral tool back on around the whole hem. So I pinned it on the mannequin and worked out what length I needed it to be at the front. So it worked out well lining the bottom of the scallop up with the edge was exactly the right length. So I just kind of pinned it as I went around. And then from the side seams and backwards all around the train, I just did it as near the edge as possible. I started at the side seam and I managed to finish it where one of these big flowers is. So I've cut around that and once it's trimmed and stitched into place, you'll barely even notice where that join is. I sewed it with a clear thread in the top thread of my machine and the cream that I've used for the rest of the dress in the spool and once it's against the cream of the skirt you won't even notice that. So the last job to do is now to go around and just trim all of the excess fabric from the stitch line downwards away and that'll give us a really neat finish on the hem and that would be the skirt done. That's how the join looks after I've trimmed it. I'm going to do that all the way around the hem of this layer and then I'll show you how the finished skirt looks. This is how the finished skirt looks from the back. And from the front. In part three, I'll show you how I add the embellishments, the beads and crystals, the tulle cake sleeves and how I finish the dress. Thanks for watching, I hope you're enjoying watching me make this gown. Please subscribe if you haven't already and make sure you click the little bell so you get notified when part three goes up. And um, Please leave a like, please leave me a comment and let me know what you think about this dress and I'll see you soon with part three.